Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing our one month recap for Merrill Edge, IRA and Roth IRA. We're going to be going over the total equity between both the portfolios, the dividends that were paid out, what stocks paid out dividends, where those dividends were reinvested into, and whether the portfolio moved up or down measuring total return for the month of November 2018. So if you are brand new to the channel, I do make stock market, personal finance, real estate investment videos every single week, so consider subscribing. And remember to like and comment you know, any sort of questions that you guys do have below in the comment section. And let's go ahead and get started. So on the left hand side, I have November 1st pulled up exactly where we were as far as the IRA and the Roth IRA. I didn't do an October 2018 video, forgot to do that. And we're going to go over the trades that were done in October here. So we can kind of do a comparison of where we were and where we're at now. So IRA, we're at $9,925.88. At the very end of October, my IRA, which mainly holds Apple, did not get slammed as much as the other FANG stocks. It wasn't until November that Apple was really hit hard. And you can see the equity here down nearly 1600 bucks. Now, within the Roth IRA, I was at $26.45, and now I'm at $27.80. So I did have a little bit of a gain there within the Roth IRA. Now, total equity here, again, 99 uh, $9,952 to now $8,357.12. So a uh, pretty big loss there across the board as far as capital, uh, as far as equity goes. Now let me go ahead and zoom this one here to about 10 and do the same on this side. And we can do, these are my total holdings for the portfolio. So on the left hand side, I had a total short term gain loss of $1,680.01. Now, most of my equity within Merrill Edge is over in Apple, and at that time, back in on the 1st of November, was within Berkshire Hathaway and Apple. I had about $3,000 in Berkshire Hathaway, and I had about $6,500 within Apple. Now you can see I sold out of my Berkshire Hathaway, and I'm back in Apple, 45 shares there. And you can see here I was up 34.52%. I am now sitting right about 0.57%. I'm still positive as far as that goes. I do own 30 shares sitting at $162, $164, and I do have a 15 shares about 200 and some dollars we'll go over it here and just in the activity here in just a minute so in the Roth IRA at the beginning of the year around March time frame I decided I want to jump into real estate so I withdrew my in you know my equity from the Roth IRA I had about eleven thousand dollars in here so I withdrew that and started up my LLC my business and started making deposits as far as contributions to kind of build up that business. I now own two properties within my own real estate business. So that's kind of like where that money went from there. So I had, uh, you know, $11,000 and some change within the Roth IRA. This is just what remains, what I couldn't pull out without any sort of penalty. So I had $26.45, it's now at $27.80. All the stocks here within the account actually moved up in November. So land here, it was down 3.09, now up 2.39%. NLY, this is the NLE Capital Management here, was down 4.34%, now only down 2.66%. My Tatron components was up 3.87%. It is now up 12.9%. So we went from a negative 2.79 to a now positive 1.56. I do have a little bit of cash in an account, a roughly 32 cents there, big whoop. Okay, now down to the IRA. I do have UPRO. I bought two shares of it, right around $51, somewhere in that range. I do plan on selling it. I do have a limit sell right now going on for this. Going into Monday, I believe the markets are going to be jumping up. I'm going to try and sell this, sell out of it at $52. It's a leveraged fund ETF for the VU. So if VU goes up 5% in a day, UPRO will go up roughly 15%. So it's a leverage fund there. I try to buy it at where the bottom was with whatever cash I had available. I couldn't buy another share of Apple. So I brought this one here and it's gonna probably pop up and sell here on Monday. Uh, UNM Insurance Company, it was down 6.97%. It's still down roughly 7.82%. So it did go down a little bit further there. Berkshire Hathaway, I bought this one 
We'll, over, we'll go over my buy-in price here. But Berkshire Hathaway in October, it got slammed. It was down 8%, whereas Apple didn't get hit very hard during October downturn, like the bloody market. Berkshire Hathaway had fallen from around 220 218 bucks now $205. I picked it up at $205.05, I believe. So I was up in my portfolio roughly 12%. Uh, 0.12%. I did sell out of this one after Apple had fell off their highs. Uh, I, so I sold Apple around 213 bucks and bought Berkshire Hathaway. And I was kind of waiting for Apple to kind of fall a bit. And then I'd buy back into that one afterwards. So Apple here, uh, it was up 34.52%. It is now only up 0.57%. Now, those are all the stocks within the portfolio as far as, you know, on the 1st of November and where we're at now. So not very many stocks in here. The total equity there fell from 9,925 to now 8,329 bucks. That was all because of Apple there. So as far as activity goes, let's go ahead and zoom in this one as well. Come on, magnifying glass. Uh, that looks about right. So that's about a five. Let's go ahead and do that same over here. There you are. Okay, zoom in. Okay. So this is October, or yeah, this is October's uh, change here. So land paid out a dividend. Apple, I sold Apple at $213.55. It was selling off towards their highs. I believe Apple had a little bit more room to grow, uh, to fall, because October, they hadn't got slaughtered as much as the other FANG stocks. I knew that Apple may fall down a little bit further into the $190 range, but I didn't know exactly where they would fall to it. So I did sell out of my Apple. Berkshire Hathaway at that time had been down roughly 8%. So I bought into Berkshire Hathaway at $205.05. I just bought a couple more shares here. I was trying to average in at a low point. So I bought 205, 205, 05, and then at 205 on the dot. And I also had some Apple hospitality paying out some dividends was just reinvested into. I had ticker symbol NLY pay out eight cents that was reinvested back into the program and Gladstone paying out four cents, which that was reinvested back in October, 2018. So basically in October, I sold out uh, 15 shares of Apple at $213.55. I bought Berkshire Hathaway right around $205.05. That was the big changes there on October 2018. Now in November timeframe, uh, land paid out a dividend that was reinvested back into. So Apple, I did sell out of my Berkshire Hathaway. So I sold out of Berkshire Hathaway one day before it jumped up extremely high. So a Berkshire Hathaway, I sold off on a Friday. On Monday, they had some announcement. I don't know if it was Adobe related, but Berkshire Hathaway jumped up to $213, $215. So I missed out by one day on just holding the stock, which, you know, it's Berkshire Hathaway. I should have just continued to hold it versus buying back into Apple. But I did buy back into Apple at $207.30. So I sold out of it at $213.55. Bought Berkshire at $205 and six. I sold Berkshire at $206.25. And I bought back into Apple at $207.30. So I made a little bit of money there, you know, off the Berkshire Hathaway. And I was able to pick up Apple a little bit cheaper and have some more cash available on hand. So Apple with those 45 shares, 45.1531 shares now of Apple. That paid me out $32.96. I was able to reinvest that back into Apple. So Apple reinvested. Uh, that $32.96 and picked up 0.173 of a share of Apple with that $33. We had UNM also paying out another dividend there of 79 cents. So this is a quarterly paying dividend, whereas Apple Hospitality and Land, these pay out every single month. So here you can see NLY over here. This paid out last month, but did not pay out this month. But Land and Apple Hospitality should be right here. Yeah, they paid out 10 cents and 4 cents. That's 14 cents. I get paid out 14 cents every month of dividends for just holding some very inexpensive stocks that, you know, I may end up buying something else with the change that I do have in the account. But that is the differences there between my October and November trade. So all I basically did was sell out of Apple because they, I felt they were going to continue to fall a little bit further. They did fall further. I bought back into Apple after selling Berkshire at a profit. But I sold them one day to short, and I missed out on a good profit gain there. I bought Apple at 207, and now it's you know I, I did fall. So 
it has fallen quite a bit from where I had initially bought them in again. So that is basically it as far as that goes. Now jumping over to my spreadsheet, this is kind of where I like to finish everything up at. Now my base investment for the Roth IRA at the top is $0. That's because I withdrew my $11,000 that I had within the account in order to fund my Roth or my real estate business. The dividends that have been paid out year to date from that portfolio is $197.70. Eight cents. Now, most of these dividends that were paid out for the Roth IRA happened at the beginning of the year. So, back in August time frame, looks like I wasn't really keeping track as uh, you know. Uh, let's, let's take a look at January. So, January I was paid out one hundred and nine dollars and ninety four cents and forty five dollars and fifty two cents within the inside the retirement account. So, oh, this is all within the taxable account. So, I held a taxable account for a while. So my taxable account was paying around $213, and then my retirement account was paying about $15. So here for the month of February, I made $228.30. March, I made $244.66. So it wasn't until it looks like April where I started uh, really cashing out my portfolio. You can see here in March, yeah, we were kind of shortening. So yeah, February is when I started selling out of my stocks here funny my real estate business so yeah uh, kind of jumping back over here so cash available in the Roth IRA account 38 cents investment difference so between uh, this doesn't really make too much sense because I don't have that much money in, in invested right now as far as the base goes uh, my base investment within the Roth IRA is zero because that's just the dividends that are kind of working in there kind of interesting hmm but let's see, we already kind of covered the total gains there. And all these stocks sort of pay out in the last weeks of the month. So in 14710, we have NLY and land. Land pays out every single month. So it pays out on the last week of every single month. So that's why it's there within all of these one, like every single month, it's, it's there. NLY pays out on 147 and 10. So January, April, July, and October on the last week. And Tatron Components pays out on the last week of February, May, August, and November. So that's why I got paid out by Tatron there towards the end of November. And then next month, the only stock here that I have within the Roth IRA that's going to be paying out a dividend is land. So here we can see that the total stock performance for the month, uh, land went up 5%, and Y went up 1.93, Tatron Components went up 937 uh, they did increase their dividend from ten cents to now twelve cents. That was a twenty percent increase there in that dividend payout. I don't have enough really money to buy. I may sell out of um, what was it? No, Tatron Components. I actually eventually want to sell out of this one. It's only a dollar and some change. I only have three dollars and fifty cents of value in that company, so I really can't buy a whole lot with that money. So we'll see how high that portfolio gets just by what I'm able to buy. <laughs> Now, the IRA, its base investment was around $8,451.76, so I'm actually below my initial starting point. This is a rollover. I rolled over my 401k back at the beginning of the year. I wanted to move it out of my 401 program. I had quit my last previous job and had about $8,000 in there, and I rolled it over into the IRA. That way I wouldn't be hit by those 401k fees. I made a video going over all the 401k fees I was getting hammered with. And if you guys have any sort of 401k that's you're not active in that company anymore, you pretty much want to roll it over into an IRA or a Roth IRA. So I have made roughly $100.53 from that total dividends from that year. And that's just because I've held Apple for quite a while within the IRA. That's primarily the only stock that I've really held in there. And the dividends here that I was paid out for the month of November 2018 was $33.85. Let's see if I can zoom in just a bit here. Yeah, there we go. So here is the IRA here. So the IRA during the month of November went down 19.35%. That is because Apple here sold off for the month 19.64%. Now my buy-in stock performance is roughly 0.57. That is because some of my shares that I purchased this with, uh, 30 shares of this stock were bought at $164. And 
the other 15 of my shares were bought at 200 and what was it? 200 and seven dollars somewhere in there. So I've lost a good amount of equity out of that 207 dollar point. We'll eventually move back to that point, but currently I am down as far as equity for the month. Uh, as far yeah, total return for the month in uh, in November was down 19.35 percent. So I'm not planning on selling Apple right now. I, I you know. I'm buying back into it. I bought back into it at 207. I do believe it'll continue to rise back up. And, you know, with the trade war now on a freeze, I think that's going to work out in their favor. So between September, the total equity in the portfolio of $10,356.23. And where I'm currently at at $8,357.13, that's a total loss in that portfolio of 16.02%. So a big loss over within the Merrill Edge account. And that is because, you know, that's a very risky there as, as far as holding one stock with all your shares. And you know, a lot of people are always saying, be careful if you're holding too much of one single stock, it can really burn you. Well, Apple, I was up 30%. I did sell out of my some of my shares here. There you saw it, 213. I rebought it, 207. So we'll see how this plays out. I'm not in any hurry to sell this stock. I believe it is going to be making a comeback. And the total equity, I'm only down very small amount from where I initially started at. And the S&P 500 year to date isn't up too high. I believe Monday we're going to have a huge jump up on the market. And here, as far as after hours goes right now, I posted this over on my Facebook page. But Monday is going to be a very green day. So this is seven hours ago that I posted this screenshot. 1.6, 1.9, 1.78. Now look at us. 1.8, 2.46, 2.0. We're having a whole lot of movement right now going in the after hours. I posted another article here just a few, uh, about an hour ago, that China is set to reduce and remove tariffs on the American cars. That's going to be a huge win there as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on there as far as the movement and tariffs and trade war and discussion. So interesting article there. President Trump just came out about 8, 8 p.m. saying that China has agreed to reduce and remove tariffs on cars. So Monday look at this monday if we refresh this we were at yeah the markets are still jumping up higher and higher here in the after hours so it's it's pretty crazy as far as that goes take a look at my um most active stuff here in the after hours i don't think this is going to have any sort of movement let's apple here apple has some sort of movement, but I, I don't know if this actively updates here in uh sunday so Monday morning, we're going to see a big jump. I believe by the end of December, Apple will be making a comeback. We'll see it bump up to maybe 185 to 195. We'll see if that surpasses my expectations or if Apple continues to fall. I do plan on holding Apple and all my other stocks. I don't plan on selling anything within this portfolio except for Upro. That's already set at a, buy, a sell price of around $52 and some change. I just want to get out of that stock and just move into maybe picking up a couple other REITs within this portfolio inside the IRA. I may end up rolling over my IRA to the Roth IRA eventually just because I don't care much for the IRA right now and holding everything within the Roth IRA. So that is all I wanted to cover in today's video. If you did like the video, hit that thumbs up button below, leave a comment below. And if you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. And if there's any suggestions that you guys have for future videos, let me know in the comment section below. I didn't want to make it too long. There isn't a whole lot of information to cover on the Merrill Hedge account. Uh, we covered the activity, the dividends that are paid out. And, you know, as far as what I'm going for in the future, I'm continuing to hold Apple. I believe as a transition from a hardware to a services. And as China is no longer going to get, you know, tariffing our American cars, Trump's not going to come out and tariff the iPhones any longer by that 10%. That's what caused them to fall a little bit further. We're going to see a big, a big leap here in Apple and across all the stocks here. So everything come Monday is going to be jumping up very nicely. We'll see how this ends up playing out for the remainder of the week if we're up some 7%. So not 7%, but, you know, I'm exaggerating there. Anyways, that is all for this video. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.